Well, sorry about the lighting on this one, but tonight is not a very good night. Um, customer just called me. I did head gaskets on her car two, three weeks ago now. It's been running fine, but uh, just called me to. Uh, it's got a check engine light. Said it was flashing. If you don't know, flashing's not good. It means uh, misfire that can damage your catalytic converters, throwing raw fuel into the exhaust. Uh, so I gotta figure what I did. Uh, so we're going to do a little diagnosis video tonight, and thanks for coming along, we're going to figure it out. So I apologize here, but it's a little cold outside. So what you're going to need is a cold reader to read your check engine light. We'll go more into depth on these in a little another video, but you're going to connect your diagnostic port, which you see on this one is right there. Make sure you're putting it the right way, which I believe I was. Okay, and first things first, I'm going to do a visual check of the engine. Cool, and is that the cold line where it should be? Uh, we got a little bit of a seep right there, which is not good. Uh, as I'm checking everything else out here, nothing seems to be drastically wrong. Got some oh, that's dried and frozen coolant, that could be just from where I spilt. No vacuum lines or anything seem wrong, nothing's detached. So we're going to go ahead and start it up and check the code and see what we're getting. So, as I check the codes right now, we got a cylinder 6 injector circuit open. And a cylinder 6 misfire detected. So I'm going to start it up real quick. Running kind of rough. See how bad the exhaust looks right now. Oh, it doesn't smell like fuel. This is cylinder number six right here. We still got spark. So it is working. Unfortunately with this one, we're going to take it back apart and uh, check out that injector harness. Okay, so the first thing that I job is we're going to remove the negative battery cable. I do believe we have that loose. So we're going to take this off. Take off the negative battery cable. As you see, it is removed. Okay, so as you see, I removed the air box and I removed some wiring and the upper or the front spark plug wires out from around the manifold. Now we need to disconnect the coolant pipe that is attaching to the throttle body, which is right here. First, before I do anything, because I'm going to have to probably move the alternator, is I'm just going to quick remove the belt. I almost forgot it. we had to take off the throttle plate, linkage plate from the throttle body to take it off. So if you notice, there's two 10 millimeter bolts right here. And if we go down, Here, there is a 13 millimeter bolt or nut right there. So we're going to take those off real quick.
You need to disconnect the linkage from the throttle body. As I already have. Not too hard. One pushes off and one comes all around the side. And I actually just misspoke again. The throttle link is just held on by another 10 meter bolt or nut to the side down here. That other nut did have to come off anyways to get the coolant pipe off that I was talking about before. And obviously it disconnected all the cables to the EGR and throttle position sensor and the IAC sensor on the throttle body. All the linkage actually slides off. So now to get this cool pipe off, we got to take off the primary heater hose here. Just use the pliers, squeeze the clamp. Once you get a hold of it. Okay, so we gotta take off this little module here. Vector right behind it. You know, this little green one right behind there. See the green? That's gonna come off. Be careful because there's a vacuum line attached underneath of it.
So we disconnected the brake booster hose and other vacuum line, and I have disconnected now the injector harness itself. Um, I'm not really seeing any problems per se right here, but this is the first start. I'm gonna get the upper manifold off to look at the rest of them. I may have rubbed through at some point in time, like for instance right now. <laughs> and we do have some abrasions. Oh. off the coil packs <laughs> they're kind of free and there's two lower bolts um, on as well but that makes it so the whole manifold can actually come off now Okay, so now that we actually have the mounts removed from the alternator, which go into the manifold itself, the manifold is actually pretty much free at this point. Um, the EGR tube is pressed into the manifold, not hard, you just gotta get it out. Um, so we're gonna start taking all the bolts out, as you see, I already started. So we're gonna start doing that now, and get this manifold off to actually see the injectors. The rest are a 10 mil bolt, besides those two 13s. So now that I've removed all the bolts, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, two for each runner on the intake. Organize them all in this metallic tray here. And at this point, we should be ready for liftoff. So, we're going to give that a shot. But you do want to be careful, there is the EGR tube back here. Be careful that we're not bending the crap out of that. There's a connector right here that goes under the manifold, so make sure. So I pull up. Now this manifold is kind of stuck, so we just put it on, so we are going to give it a little thing. I believe we're going to have liftoff right now.
stuff a rig into each of the ports just so nothing falls down in there. That we can't get back out. Alrighty, so now I'm simply going to look at the injector harness. And as you see, we had an injector that was actually unplugged. So, that was unfortunate, you had to go through all that work just to get to that injector, open circuit. Yeah, so, there was our misfire cylinder number six issue. Kind of really sucks you had to go this deep into getting it. But, we are going to continue on. So, now that we've figured out our problem with injector number six coming loose, that was where our Injector 6 misfire was coming from, or open circuit and misfire. So now we are just going to continue to reassemble the engine. So basically, you want to make sure all your connections are good on the injector harness. You want to make sure there's no corrosion on the pins if this issue was not yours, where it's just unplugged. Um, sometimes there's splits in the wires, which is why I got another harness, uh, just in case the issue was far worse than what it was here. Um, if you have splits in the wires that need to be repaired, obviously, and you might be dealing with a pin inject a pin problem for you know where they meet, just corrosion, anything else like that. You just had to figure out the repair. And uh, also another video on injector resistance testing to test the injectors once you get the upper manifold off if that you believe that is your issue. So basically, this is the end of part one. Part two is reassembly, um, and I do have a couple. Part two will be out. And I do have a couple videos on bleeding the cooling system and injectors testing, which I had previously mentioned. So we'll put those in. And again, this is Joe the Auto Guy. Thanks for watching. And please like and subscribe to the channel. And I'll have more videos to come. Again, thanks for watching.